In the heart of the dense, dark woods where the trees loomed like silent sentinels and the night seemed to stretch on forever, there existed a place that no sane soul dared to tread. It was known to locals only as The Hollow, a name whispered in hushed tones by those who lived on the outskirts of the forest. The Hollow was a place of ancient, unspeakable horrors, a place where the boundary between the living and the dead blurred, and where the very air seemed to throb with an unnatural energy. One crisp autumn day, a man named Edward ventured into the woods, his heart heavy with grief. He had lost his wife to a long battle with illness, and he sought solace in the wilderness, believing that the solitude of the woods might help ease his pain. Edward was a rugged, middle-aged man, his beard flecked with grey, and his eyes etched with sorrow. He brought with him his loyal companion, a black Labrador named Max, who had been his faithful friend for many years. As Edward and Max delved deeper into the forest, the world outside seemed to fade away, replaced by the eerie silence of the woods. The trees stood tall and forbidding, their branches interlocking like skeletal fingers. The forest floor was carpeted with a thick layer of decaying leaves that crunched beneath their feet. The day stretched on, and the sun began its descent, casting long shadows that danced through the trees. Edward set up camp near a small clear stream, the gentle babbling of water providing a soothing backdrop to his thoughts. He gathered firewood and kindled a warm, crackling fire, the flames flickering like ancient spirits. As night fell, Edward's unease grew. He couldn't shake the feeling that they were not alone in the woods. Max, too, seemed on edge, his hackles raised as he growled softly into the darkness. Edward dismissed it as a trick of the imagination, a product of his grief-addled mind. He cooked a simple meal over the fire and shared it with Max, trying to find comfort in the routine of their camping rituals. But as the night wore on, the forest seemed to close in around them, its oppressive weight bearing down on Edward's shoulders. Then, in the dead of night, a sound like a mournful wail pierced the silence. Edward jolted awake, his heart pounding in his chest. He reached for his flashlight, his hand trembling, and shone it into the impenetrable darkness. There. On the outskirts of their camp, he saw it. A shadowy figure, tall and twisted, moved with unnatural grace through the trees. Its eyes glowed with an otherworldly light, and its voice echoed through the forest, a haunting lament that seemed to pierce Edward's very soul. He clutched Max tightly, the dog's fierce growls reverberating through his body. The figure drew closer, revealing itself to be a woman, or at least what was once a woman, her tattered gown hung from her skeletal frame, and her face was a ghastly mask of decay, her eyes sunken and empty. She moved towards them with a ghostly grace, her bony fingers outstretched. In a panic, Edward scrambled to his feet, abandoning his camp and everything he had brought with him. He and Max fled into the night, pursued by the ghastly apparition. The forest seemed to warp and shift around them, the trees closing in like sinister sentinels. Hours passed, but the relentless pursuit continued. Edward and Max were trapped in a nightmarish labyrinth of shifting shadows and echoing whispers. At last, they stumbled upon a clearing, the moon casting an eerie silver glow upon the ground. In the center of the clearing, they saw it, the source of the horror that had pursued them. A gnarled tree, its roots like twisted serpents, rose from the earth. Hanging from its branches were the lifeless bodies of countless souls, their faces contorted in agony. Edward and Max watched in horror as the ghostly figure approached the tree, her spectral hand reaching out to add another victim to the gruesome collection. But just as she was about to grasp Edward, Max leaped forward, teeth bared, and attacked the ghastly apparition. A fierce battle ensued, a clash between the living and the dead. Max's determination was unwavering, his loyalty to Edward driving him to fight with all his might. The ghostly figure howled in agony as the dog's teeth sank into her insubstantial form. Finally, with a bone-chilling shriek, the ghostly figure dissipated into a swirling mist, vanishing into the night. Edward and Max were left breathless, covered in sweat and mud, their bodies battered and bruised. But they were alive, and they had survived the horrors of the hollow. As dawn broke, they emerged from the forest, their faces etched with the trauma of their nightmarish ordeal. The townspeople would never believe their story, but the terror of that night would haunt them forever. Edward and Max returned to their normal lives, 
forever changed by their encounter with the horrors of the hollow. They carried with them the scars of that night, a constant reminder that in the darkest corners of the world, unspeakable terrors lurk, waiting to ensnare the unwary. The woods would forever be a place of dread and mystery, a place where the living and the dead intersected, and where the boundaries of reality blurred into nightmare. The wind howled through the trees as the three kids, Emma, Max and Sophie, ventured deep into the heart of the whispering woods. They had heard the stories, tales of the eerie forest that sent shivers down the spines of even the bravest souls. But they were determined to prove their mettle, to conquer their fears. It all began with a diary Max had found in his grandfather's attic. The diary belonged to a man named Samuel Hargrove, who had embarked on a camping trip to the very same woods decades ago. Max was intrigued by the detailed accounts of Samuel's journey into the Whispering Woods, his encounters with strange phenomena, and the cryptic warnings he had left behind. As the three friends read the diary together, they hatched a plan to follow in Samuel's footsteps. Armed with camping gear, flashlights, and a sense of adventure, they set out into the forest, determined to uncover the truth behind the chilling entries. The woods welcomed them with an ominous silence. Twisted trees loomed overhead, their gnarled branches casting eerie shadows on the forest floor. The oppressive darkness seemed to consume their flashlight's beams as they ventured deeper, following the diary's directions. According to Samuel, we need to find the weeping willow near the heart of the forest, Emma whispered, her voice quivering. They pressed on, the dense underbrush making each step a struggle. The further they went, the more they felt an unsettling presence watching them from the shadows. Hours passed and their sense of time grew distorted. The forest seemed to be alive, the rustling leaves and snapping twigs playing tricks on their minds. Sophie stumbled and fell, her flashlight rolling away from her grasp. Guys, wait up, she called out, her voice trembling. As Max and Emma turned back to help her up, they heard something that made their blood run cold. It was a faint, ghostly whisper, like the sigh of the wind through the trees, but with words that sent shivers down their spines. Turn back, turn back, the forest hungers. They exchanged terrified glances, their faces pale. None of them had said those words. It was as if the very forest itself had spoken to them. Determined to uncover the secrets of the whispering woods, they pressed on, finally arriving at the heart of the forest. There they found it, the ancient weeping willow. Its long, twisted branches hung low, swaying ominously in the wind. The diary had mentioned that beneath the weeping willow was a hidden entrance to a cavern. It was said to be a portal to another realm, a place Samuel had feared to enter, but had been inexplicably drawn to. They moved closer to the tree, their breath shaky. Emma reached out and touched the tree's gnarled trunk, causing it to let out an eerie, mournful groan. As if in response, the ground beneath their feet shifted, and a narrow fissure appeared at the base of the tree. Max hesitated but the lure of the unknown was too strong. With a deep breath, he squeezed through the narrow opening followed closely by Emma and Sophie. Inside, they found themselves in a cavern, its walls glistening with dampness. The air inside was cold and stale, carrying with it a pungent odor that made their stomachs turn. The diary had warned of this place being cursed, a prison for something ancient and malevolent. As they explored deeper into the cavern, the temperature dropped, and their flashlights cast long, eerie shadows on the walls. The feeling of being watched grew stronger, and their sense of dread intensified. They stumbled upon a chamber filled with strange symbols etched into the walls, symbols they couldn't decipher. In the center of the room lay a stone pedestal with an old, leather-bound book resting upon it. Emma cautiously picked it up and began flipping through its pages. The diary's entries in Samuel's handwriting continued here. He wrote of being tormented by whispers in the night, of seeing shadowy figures moving in the darkness, and of an overwhelming sense of dread that had plagued him. The diary spoke of an entity trapped within the cavern, an entity that sought to escape. Suddenly, the cavern seemed to come alive. The walls pulsated, and the symbols glowed with another worldly light. The ground beneath them trembled, and the air grew thick with an oppressive presence. The diary had warned of a malevolent force, and now they felt it closing in on them. Panic set in as they realized the dire nature of their situation. 
They had entered a realm of darkness and were now trapped within it, surrounded by an entity that hungered for release. Desperate to escape, they retraced their steps, rushing back toward the weeping willow. The forest seemed to taunt them, the trees shifting and twisting to block their path. The whispers grew louder, more menacing. Turn back, turn back. The forest hungers. Their flashlights flickered and died, leaving them in utter darkness. They stumbled blindly through the woods, branches clawing at their skin, the ground uneven and treacherous. As they finally burst through the trees and into the moonlight, they realized they had emerged from the forest, back into the world they knew. The weeping willow was gone, and the entrance to the cavern sealed behind them. Exhausted and terrified, they collapsed on the ground, their bodies battered and bruised. But the terror they had experienced in the whispering woods lingered like a curse. The diary had been their guide, but it had also been a warning. A cautionary tale of the horrors that awaited those who dared to tread where they didn't belong. In the weeks that followed, they would be plagued by nightmares. Whispers in the night, shadowy figures lurking just beyond their vision, and a relentless feeling of dread that refused to let go. The whispering woods had changed them, leaving scars that would never heal. They had thought they could conquer their fears, but in the end, it was the forest that had conquered them its malevolent presence eternally imprinted on their souls. And as they lay awake in the dead of night, they could still hear the faint, ghostly whisper in the wind, a reminder of the darkness that had claimed them. Turn back, turn back, the forest hungers. But they would never turn back, for they were lost forever in the realm of darkness, prisoners of the whispering woods.